and we appreciate it. Well, thanks, man. Now, you get into the Midwest, and you got so many variables, uh, not only altitude. You think, oh, man, that's just one big flat open area. It's amazing at the drift from the uh, Great Lakes for the cold air coming, the dry air coming in out of the Rocky Mountains, the warm, moist air coming out of the Gulf of Mexico, and that makes those areas. Um, I think one of the most incredible things, weather phenomena-wise, that I saw yeah. was actually in Denver, and I was in Boulder, and it snowed that morning, and by the afternoon, we were coming out of the Walnut Street Brewery, fancy that, and the snow was just about gone because the Chinook winds, which is snow eater in Chinook, um, kicked in, and it was 75 degrees, 80 degrees by the afternoon, and the snow, whoosh, just sublimated. Wow. It didn't even leave puddles. It just evaporated into the dry air. Just absolutely amazing. That makes those areas very tough to forecast. All right, let's get into our forecast. We'll start here, and this is where just a little while ago you saw me doing some of the work behind the scenes, plug in some of the numbers that have come through so already. This is a 12-hour total going back to some of what we saw late last night and into where we sit right now. We're basically going back 12 hours, but anytime we start to see inch, inch and a half, um, definitely up to about an inch and a third to an inch and a half, we'll We'll get the aerial flood advisories and that's what we have here around parts of St. John's County World Golf Village. If you get my push alerts, I'd put the uh, at one point it was up around uh, Bayard at Phillips Highway and stretching southward here into World Golf and this is slowly made it across the river, which is why we won't be doing any tracking. So I'll put this into play here just to show you what we're talking about. And this is the drift and watch the timeline. I mean, I've got this thing going back 45 minutes. So if I was to do tracks, they're going to be really tiny. So I think better use here give you an idea where the rain sets by the way it's heading here toward palatka clearing out through parts of st john's but we still have it just to the south of the green cove um, or shans bridge rather and that too will continue to cross over Let's go back in a little closer. I think this will be a little bit more effective than trying to put any tracks on it. As we move over into the areas here around Rice Creek and Pecan, you're going to see your moderate rain turn heavy, even the rumble of thunder coming through Teasdale and into Bostwick. This is going to continue to head south here into Reed Street. River Road seeing a pretty good round here as you cross over the river. Fairview, Bridgeport in between, and Clay Landing. You see what's going to come here. That's sitting off to the west, so that still has to come through, and that'll be the same idea here for Bridgeport as we get to where do we are? about 4 30 and that's going to take you into around five o'clock and in southeast georgia we're seeing less now around the shores over toward brunswick as they continue to collect here happy landing and northward highway 82 same spots that we were talking about yesterday with some of the downpours and speaking of that across the swamp and moving southward here into areas of baker county look out baxter you got some thunderstorms to the north they're going to come through kind of riding the river here as parts of charlton county will also see some of these downpours as they continue all right, back to the tropics here. We got our local forecast covered. We're watching barrel category four right now. Major hurricane. Folks are bracing in Jamaica for the storm surge, the wind, and what could be the rain. And the rain does continue here through parts of Hispaniola and into uh, Puerto Rico as well. Locally, temperatures will bottom out. It's going to be a warm start to the hump of the work week with our temperatures in the 70s as we start our Wednesday. Rain chances continue, but I'm liking the models here, bringing down that chance on Thursday. We'll be watching the timing here so we can get some of those fireworks off on July 4th. Friday and Saturday, the trend continues. We're back to what we a little bit more the dominant southeasterly flow, so it typically pushes them in a little more inland. And then we're back to a west and southwest flow next week, and that'll bring up our chance for some showers. Temperatures are going to continue widespread in the 90s, and that's a trend that is going to continue through the next seven days, making it pretty easy to nail down, Tark. Richard, thank you. You know, July is a good time to save thanks to the 4th of July, Amazon Prime.